Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about supermassive black holes once again. And more specifically we're going to discuss planets around these objects. Let's find out if it's possible for planets to exist around supermassive black holes and welcome to Odeme. So this right here is a simulation with a black hole, very massive black hole, and a planet nearby. And we've actually discussed the idea of having various planets, including habitable planets around black holes, in one of the previous videos. But today we're going to talk about the idea of planets forming around black holes and actually becoming their own sort of objects, without any stars, without anything else in the vicinity. And it's a study that I recently discovered completely by accident, and you can also find it in the description below. This study doesn't really talk much about the nearby or the uh, close regions of a black hole, specifically the regions that you see right here. And it doesn't really talk about the accretion disk or any other um, regions that we normally talk about. It talks about the so-called circumnuclear region or the so-called circumnuclear disk that you can kind of see right here. And we believe that our black hole has it as well, we just don't really see it because of the perspective from which we're looking at our own black hole. But we know that these disks exist and it's actually one of the reasons why the M87 black hole, where we're zooming in right now, is so difficult to see. It's surrounded by this tremendously large disk of dust that's covering the black hole and you can only really see the black hole through the radio waves that pass through the dust quite easily. Now to help you visualize some of this, let's try to recreate some smaller parts here in Universe Sandbox, just so you can see what we're talking about. So here is a black hole, this is Sagittarius A star, the one in the middle of our own galaxy, and it's surrounded by the accretion disk. This is a much, much smaller version of the typical accretion disk, just to represent what all of this looks like. This is the matter that slowly orbits around the black hole and basically makes its way toward the center. And then at a much, much larger distance, uh, usually very, very, very far away, sometimes even several hundred light years away from here, there is another very large formation known as the circumnuclear disk. Now, right now it's very difficult to see it, but as I add more parts to it, you'll realize that it's essentially this extremely large torus shape that um, is literally hiding the black hole because of all of this dust that sort of orbits around the black hole and prevents the light from escaping it. And this very large shape, this torus shape that has uh, formed through this dust um, orbiting around the black hole, that's literally what we refer to as the circumnuclear disk. Now, the shape and the size always differs, but we know that these objects are much larger around active galaxies, specifically galaxies with active galactic nuclei. So if the black hole in the middle is very active and produces a lot of energy, spewing out a lot of gas in the process, this usually results in a much larger circumnuclear disk that is then a lot better at literally hiding the black hole. Which is why M87 is so difficult to see, because the circumnuclear disk there is very, very large. But in a typical, somewhat active galactic nuclei, specifically in a galaxy that's not really a quasar, not a very bright object, but it does have activity in the middle, there is usually enough dust here to form a disk that's around 300 to 400 light years across, and usually the mass of this disk is around 10% of the mass of the black hole. So hypothetically speaking, for our black hole, this means that it would be about 400 to maybe 500,000 masses of the sun, all concentrated in this relatively large disk. Now some parts here take about a million years to orbit, some parts will take 100 million years to orbit. So the actual orbital speed and the actual interaction between particles is very, very minute and very small. But sometimes these galaxies stay like this for a very long time. And this is what the scientists behind this paper decided to try to calculate and study. They realized that these tiny particles, these little particles that you see here, each of them eventually is going to start mixing together and eventually form bigger and bigger and bigger shapes. And at some point, this can become large enough 
to literally start forming planets. Now, they tried to do the simulations of this and try to calculate how long this would take, and they realized that this is a very slow process. But they also realized that it's quite possible because of the conditions that are created so far away from a black hole where it's no longer really energetic, but also where there's enough material for all of this to start coming together. Now, this object right here is about 100 meters or about 300 feet in radius, and they believe that such an object would potentially be produced within the time of AGN. In other words, for this black hole in the middle to be active, it needs about maybe 10 to roughly around 100 million years. And during this time, this could be produced. Such object could definitely be made and then have enough mass to start attracting other objects to literally grow in size quite exponentially similarly to how planets grow from a typical circumplanetary disk that we've observed in many different systems out there. Now, the only main difference here, of course, is that it's a much slower process. There is no uh, star in the middle to kind of start influencing things, but instead there's a black hole. And at the same time, there's probably very little interaction between objects and very, very little collisions or any other disturbances. In other words, it's a very, very slow process, but it's a very methodical process, and it's probably quite good at producing really, really large, really massive planets. Depending, of course, on what happens to all of this gas with time, and whether this gas can continue to grow and then maybe even become a star. Now, let's actually see if we can create a tiny planet here using the material that is orbiting this black hole, and let's maybe see um, if it actually turns into a star as well. But a very important reminder from this paper is that this is a really slow process. So essentially, after about 100 million years, you would expect to see maybe a planetary size object, or at least a protoplanetary size object. And then maybe within about 100 more million years, you would start seeing quite a lot of um, relatively large moon-like or possibly even planet-sized objects, but obviously all of them quite far away from one another. Now, um, the dust here, for the most part, is probably only hydrogen and helium, so it's very likely that a lot of these objects would probably end up being some sort of gas giants, or at least objects similar to a typical gas giant. And um, obviously, as they grow larger and larger, there's also a chance for them to become stars. And although the theory behind this is actually pretty solid and there's definitely a lot of material out there very close to these black holes to produce these objects, the more difficult part for us would be to actually detect these objects, because planets are relatively hard to see, especially so close to a black hole. And so it's very likely we're not going to be able to see these planets, unless of course they do actually turn into an object like a brown dwarf, or even better, some sort of a star, a red dwarf. If we actually do detect a young red dwarf somewhere in the vicinity of a black hole, specifically within about 300 or so light years away from it, and it's a star that was just born, it's probably something that was created in this way, and this would definitely be a very solid proof of this particular hypothesis. But for now, it's unfortunately only a hypothesis based on simulations and, I guess, based on relatively solid math and understanding of the uh, galaxy. But even though in this particular simulation this star is relatively close to the black hole, and all of the planets that have been creating are also very close, we believe that for a typical supermassive black hole, this can only start happening on the outskirts or past the outskirts of the so-called snow line. And for a black hole like this one, this snow line is really far away. And let me show you how far away it is. It is at least 5 light years um, away from the center, which is basically somewhere over here. It's actually even more than that because the black hole we're using is more massive. So this is roughly where the so-called snow line is, and past that we could potentially produce these planets. But within this radius, it's just not really possible because the black hole is too energetic and produces way, way too many emissions for the circumnuclear disk to produce anything that's uh, capable of creating planets or, of course, stars. And what's more, once the black hole is no longer active, similar to the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, we don't really know what happens. We believe that this gas does sort of eventually dissipate and probably escape into the rest of the galaxy, 
traveling across the galaxy, possibly combining with other dust clouds, and maybe even falling onto planets like planet Earth. But we don't think that it um, becomes a planet or a star by itself. As a matter of fact, we think that maybe some of this gas escapes the galaxy completely and then becomes the so-called intergalactic dust, especially if this gas moves really, really fast. But for now, we don't really know. We know that the dust interaction and also the particle interaction within galaxies and between galaxies is very complex. We're still learning quite a lot about it. As a matter of fact, I'm currently making a video about the intergalactic dust that's going to come out really soon. Or maybe it has already come out if you're watching this in the future. But for now, that's really all I wanted to mention in this video. And basically, just to give an idea, we think that in this region right here, roughly around 200 to maybe 300 light years away from a black hole, we could have planets form completely by themselves, especially if the galaxy is not too active, but also not too quiet. Specifically, galaxies like the beautiful galaxy Centaurus A that you see right here, that's one of the most beautiful galaxies out there and is um, basically the closest such galaxy to us. Here, there might be planets forming. And if we actually have a powerful enough radio telescope, specifically the telescope that allowed us to take a picture of M87 black hole, we might be able to use similar technology to look around the black hole and discover radio pulses coming from these planets. But this is not something we'll be doing anytime soon, and it'll probably take a few years before such mission will even begin. For now though, it's definitely a really interesting idea, and if one day we discover a planet somewhere on the outskirts of a black hole, it's probably going to be around this galaxy right here. On that note, that's all I wanted to mention. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences. And maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.